The aeration technique is one that is commonly known in pastry because we work with meringue or whipped cream, which are examples of recipes that we use to incorporate air and create much lighter textures in pastry. But today, we're going to explain exactly how it works, what parameters we have to take into account in order to create a good and stable aeration that allows us to create the elaborations and textures as we want them. Exactly. Exactly, Jordi. As you say, not only in pastry do we find these airy textures, but we can also find them in the ice cream industry, bakeries, pastry shops, or even in restaurant desserts. It's funny because I'd never have thought that a loaf of bread. I've been in the world of bread all my life, since I was 15 years old, that it was an aeration, and it is. Indeed. Now we're going to explain it a little bit more. In fact, we have a wide variety of textures, all of them with different characteristics. But what they all have in common is that they're created by introducing air into a liquid. And one way to classify them would be according to their density. For example, density is mass divided by volume. What does that mean? For example, if we take two foams in the same space, if we... When we talk, sorry, when we talk about foam, we're talking about a loaf of bread, a cake. It's not a foam as we know it in the world of restaurant desserts, but... An airy texture. Foam as a concept. Exactly. We call it foam or an airy texture. Well, this, when comparing two foams or airy textures in the same volume, if, for example, we take bread in a meringue, we'll see that bread is denser, let's say because it has less air than, for example, a meringue or a chocolate air or whipped cream. Because they have more air in the same space, unlike a bread or a cake. This is a way of classifying foams according to their density. Well, here, in this table, we have some examples that we ordered from denser or denser foams to less dense with much more air. Bread is an airy texture. We will now explain how this foam is made, followed by the sponge cake, which we could say has less air, to a marshmallow, a mousse, whipped cream, for example, a meringue, and finally, an air. Here we have a chocolate air, but it could be any air that we use in a restaurant dessert or in dessert in general. They're textures with a lot of air, from less dense to more dense. So, Paula, exactly, what is a foam? A foam is the introduction of gas into a liquid. We could say that it's an emulsion of gas and water. Just like an emulsion has two phases, in foams or airy textures, we also have two phases. A continuous phase, which is the liquid phase, and a dispersed phase, which is the gas that we introduce. Mm -hmm.